Oh. Oh no. Crap. Well, that's a problem. Hello YouTube, so we have a broken wheel stud. And if you ever encountered this issue, you may have been putting wheel lug nuts on your vehicle or taking them off, whether you were trying to do some kind of work on the vehicle or swapping out tires or something like that. And of course, uh, these studs may have a tendency to break. Now, the first issue is what you wanna do is try to take this um, piece of the old stud out of this particular lug nut. Um, I don't recommend doing that. I talked to a mechanic friend of mine and basically he says these threads might be messed up so uh, you want to order a new uh, lug nut and a new wheel stud. So we've done exactly that. We'll go through the process of showing you how to replace that. Um, so what you want to do is um, you want to have your um, tire iron uh, you can use any type really uh, you're gonna need that as to start off you're gonna need some kind of lift so I have this jack um, this is a three-ton jack low profile but you can use the jack that comes with the vehicle um, I have some soft padded um, foam here to just kind of put my knees on and then the other tools you you need are like I mentioned a wheel nut you need a wheel stud and you need two of these washers. Now, these washers are gonna come in handy because you don't need to buy any special tools to take that broken stud out. So we'll show you that. You need a set of sockets. Um, I, my vehicle uses, I think, 17, but uh, depending on what you use, so you wanna have a deep stud socket. And then it's easier to do this with a uh, impact uh, uh, driver. So I have an impact driver that actually has uh, this is the Bosch Freak as they call it. This actually has a um, an attachment so you can actually put these sockets on it. So it's got a socket attachment on it. You have, uh, you can borrow one or you can do it by hand, but I recommend using this. This is the part that we're gonna need to, to put the uh, actual new wheel stud in. So again, wheel stud, there it is, new one, and a new, um, lug nut so or wheel nut uh, and uh, this both of these I ordered on rockauto.com first thing you want to do uh, with this vehicle it has a locking um, lug nut so you can see locking wheels one of them is different so what we want to do is grab the key for it most vehicles it's located in the back and grab it from the side here usually on the right side where the tire uh, equipment is. Should be right here. There it is. All right, so here's our locking nut. And of course, I actually got a spare wheel nut or lug nut, but uh, as you can see, <laughs> this one also broke off so I have to order another one so before you order check your uh, if there's an accessory pouch in the back of your vehicle this is the again the key to unlock the locking uh, wheel nut there so we're going to use that of course your vehicle may not have that which is even easier so I don't really like these but that's what the vehicle came with uh, the other big thing safety first so you want to put a wheel chalk up front or in the back, shall I say. So since we're lifting the left side of the vehicle, we wanna put this on the opposite side, right here. Okay, so we'll start with the locked wheel first. So while the vehicle's on the ground, we wanna obviously take the, loosen the lug nuts or the wheel nuts. So this one just takes a little bit to click in. these there we go clicks in and then just simply loosen it there we go this one's you can do it by hand now so you're good to go the rest you can just again 
typically you follow a star pattern so we would do this one but since it's broken we're gonna go to the next one here so loosen So that's good, that one's loose, and now we can jack the vehicle up. All right, so to jack this up, we're pull, pulling our jack. Again, if you have the, if you're using the jack that comes with the vehicle, you can just uh, put it right underneath here, connect it, and then make sure that it's at the jack point. And you can tell by this little indentation, that's your jacking point right there. So you want to have you wanna make sure that jack is secure there. So I'm gonna jack it up a little bit. And check it. So we're getting close. Yep, so right there. And then now we can Make sure that it's intact and jack it up. All right, so we jacked the vehicle up off the ground. You know, a quarter inch or so, doesn't really have to be that high. And uh, now we are going to loosen all of these and take them off. Now be careful here because uh, as you take the last one off, the wheel may fall off depending on how long it's been since you last took it off. So just be careful um, slowly. You can see it's, there we go. Just wrap your toes, fingers, everything, move all this over. There we go. And there we go, we got the wheel off. So now to remove this uh, broken stud, you have to push it out or basically hammer out the other way, other direction. And get a hammer and you can just take like a screwdriver or a chisel or something. Problem is though, that's gonna be, it's in the wheel hub so you can't get to it. So what we have to do is take the brake off and take the uh, ro rotor off. So we're going to just basically unscrew the mounting screws that are back here that hold, hard to see, but uh, that hold the actual caliper in place. Take the caliper out of the way, take that rotor off, and then once we have that rotor off, we're going to be able to access this, pop it out. And it should be easy. So let's do that. So, my situation I'm using a seventeen uh, millimeter. So, and again, the top mounting bolt is right there, and the bottom one's right down there. So, again, these we have to remove to get the caliper off. I'm going to just slide it, hook it somewhere up here, and then after that, we're going to slide this off. Alright, so we have the top one off. That bolt right there. And we're gonna get the bottom one. Now be careful. Make sure you hold the caliper as you take the other one out because you don't want it to drop. If the caliper drops, it can tear your brake line off, which is right here, and that can cause an issue, obviously. Now, there 
we go. So the main thing with the rotor, you really got to just pound it. Make sure you're not hitting this part here. That's where the brake makes contact. So you can just do the opposite ends here. You can do some WD-40 here. And that should loosen it up. Take a hammer. Whack it a few times, that should come out on the other side. go there it is there's the old broken wheel stud failed right there and um, let's put the new one in so this is the magic here with putting the new one in slide it from the back as normal So we have to make an indentation here, a little bit in this um, little shield behind the uh, wheel um, bearing there, but basically we couldn't put this wheel stud in straight, it was going kind of crooked, but now that I made that indentation, it actually clears that, and there it is. Now, to get this piece in, this is where we're gonna apply that little magic trick. I'm gonna grab these, grab our impact, and grab our 17. I think it's 17. Well, let's take the whole thing and we'll see. All right, so to seat this so it's nice and sturdy like that, there's a tool, but instead of using that tool, just put these on like so. Now, you do want to usually want to apply some grease to the end of this, but so WD 40 is going to be fine as well, I think, just so that it doesn't get attached to the wheel hub. And then uh, we're going to take one of the older wheel studs. You don't want to use the new one, just in case. And then you want to carefully thread that on. And uh, then we're going to use our impact, put this on, and essentially that's going to pull that stud in. So let's do that. Clean this a little bit, make sure that your threads are clean, no dirt, keep it straight, put our 21 on. Carefully get it close. And it's straight, and now we're gonna go in until this stuff goes in. It looks like it's in, based on comparing it to the other ones. Let's take a look, shall we? Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. And now we're gonna just take that off. I'll see what we got. Yeah, that's not moving. So looks like it's good. Good to go. And there we go. That's it. So the rest of the process is pretty straightforward. 
rotor back on just like normal and then we're gonna um, take our two bolts that we have here somewhere hidden remember the two bolts that are going to hold the caliper in place um, up here and one down there and um, pop it back on after the rotor and then lastly put our uh, tire and wheel back on so that's it All right, so once you have it all connected, make sure that you know these are pretty tight, your caliper doesn't fall off. Uh, you can check with your you know, hand tighten generally is what I recommend. So just make sure that there's no movement here on this one and the bottom one. We want to put the wheel back on and pull the wheel out. out. And so usually I just push it in and hand thread it a little bit on the bottom. So we got one that's kind of giving us issues, but that's okay. So hand tighten these. Again, if you tighten four and leave one out, that's fine. Then you want to use your tire iron and tighten them a little bit further. What I like to do is hold the wheel up a little bit. Just before I tighten fully. So see these go pretty smoothly. All right, now we're ready to drop the vehicle slowly. There we go. So we're going to leave so we don't break it. And put it. Job finished.